Hi guys, I'm Harkin and welcome to Hark's Paints. Today is the second part of our Total Beginner's Guide to the 40k Hobby Crash Course. Today we're going to get to grips with actually painting. Now whether you're completely new to the hobby or you're very rusty and getting back into it, don't worry, we're not going to be doing the absolute Mona Lisa of Space Marines the first time round, but what we are going to do is go over some basic principles of how the hell we actually paint our models. I'm going to show you some of my own process and hopefully you can adapt that into the stuff that you're going to work on. First off, get in the habit of priming your models. Why? Firstly, it's a good starting point that provides an overall undertone for you to work with when applying colour. And secondly, it helps paint to stick to your models. This is particularly prevalent in metal and resin models, but today we'll be working with just regular old plastic. Now you can prime your models in whichever colour you like and there are plenty of paints in both pot and spray forms across a variety of brands for you to choose from. You could use blacks, whites, blue tones, green tones, the look at your enemies, it's all good. The colour for the job depends on what you're going for. For example, priming in white makes it easier to develop bright hues and brilliant highlights. Darker colours like black are better for more sedate and opaque colour ranges. I personally go with black and develop highlight layers as I go for the sake of simplicity. However, you may wish to use a light tone depending on your choice of paint. Just make sure when you prime your model, you keep the paint you're working with nice and thin. If you blast a mini at close range with too much paint or just slop it on with a brush without really thinking it through, you're going to likely create a thick layer of paint which will ultimately obscure the surface details on the miniature. If you're using a brush to prime, do it in thin coats and work the mixture into the model's crevices. If you're using a spray can, make sure you keep the can at least 30 centimeters away from the miniature and spray in short controlled bursts. You want to make sure you do this outside in a, or in a very well ventilated area. Now it's okay if you're not 100% sure about a color scheme to start out with. There's a few things you can do to help you decide on your overall scheme before even touching your miniatures. Why not put down a few swatch style colors on a piece of kitchen paper to see how they look next to each other first. If you have a pound shop nearby, you could pick up a cheap Airfix model and use it as a practice model. I personally used some old jean stealers from when I was a kid to try different colours and techniques on. Additionally, Games Workshop has a free app called Citadel Paint The App. This essentially allows you to select a vanilla Warhammer unit and put different paint colours on their armor's key areas, and gives you a basic visual idea of what you might be working with. Okay, so once your primer is all dried and you have an idea of what you want to paint, it's time to get down to business. Firstly, make sure you have the right brush for the job. These are the initial strokes, so you don't want a massive dry brush for a troop or a high detail brush for a tank on the first pass. Now look at what you're working with. Which part of the model uses the same material? Is it mostly skin? Is it mostly armour or clothing? In this example I'm doing a Black Templar's Primaris Marine who wears a lot of armour with big surface areas so naturally I'll start with the primary armour tone there. Now never apply paint straight out of the pot onto your model. Like we said with priming, thick paint layers will only lead to bumpy results which ultimately obscure detail on the model. Instead, load a small amount of paint onto your brush, then gently remove the paint buildup on a piece of kitchen towel to thin it out. If we just remove a half amount, we can slowly apply a thin uniform coat, which we can touch up over a few passes. Apply a little, let it settle while you paint another area. For these base layers, we're only gently applying the paint with small careful strokes. If this is your first time painting, take your time with this, there's no rush. Don't load more paint onto your brush until absolutely necessary, and when you do, be economic. Look at your kitchen towel. Is the paint on it still wet from where you got rid of the strokes? Load some of that up and make sure you use it up. Just mop it up with your brush carefully. Be careful when removing the paint like this, that you do not damage your paint bristles. A dry brush is fine, but not if it damages your tools beyond use. I want you to observe the brush on the right here. This one has been used a few times and after each colour application has been washed in the water pot and gently dried out on the kitchen towel. I'm gently kneading the brush fibres between my finger and thumb, maintaining the brush position. When I apply the paint again, the brush has still been dried out to a good degree and a large amount of paint has been removed. Now look at the brush on the left. It's identical to the last one, but look at the bristles. Here I've applied the same technique where I've been removing the paint from the brush, but in this case, I've removed too much moisture and not cleaned my brush enough in between different paints.
Now that we've got all of our base layer down, we're going to use Mechanica's Standard Grey to spice up our armor a bit and give it a bit more of a, a highlight. So, what I'm going to do is remove quite a lot of it from my brush, and as we talked about before, we're going to dry brush the edges of the armor. So what I'm going to do is go to the edges of the chest plate, the knees, the, uh, the shin armor, the boots, uh, the gorget here, just anywhere where there is a very noticeable edge to the armor, and I'm going to dry brush it on to highlight it. Once I've done that, I'm going to take out Administratum Grey, and I'm just going to start applying that to the big thick areas that I want to be white on the armor. We will use a white later on, but for now we're going to use this as a primer. Now unlike before, where we removed almost all of the paint from the brush, we're going to thinly apply it numerous times until we get a nice matte cover. We're going to do this on the main part of the shoulders, the power fist, the knees, and the helmet of the Black Templar. Now again, as you can see here, it's a little bit spotty, but that's fine. We're going to go over it numerous times. So we're going to have two or maybe even three passes before we get a nice matte effect like we've got here. It's nice and flat, as you can see. I've also quickly gone over it with a lot of the paint removed from my brush, so to the point where I have a dry brush consistency to, again, highlight some of the edges, as you can see. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's move on to some of the metals. So, first I'm going to use Lead Belcher. I'm going to give it a good shake, and I'm going to apply that to the metal components of the armor. So, I'm going to remove most of the Lead Belcher from my brush, and then I'm going to apply it to the metal components of my model. So, these are the bolter, the muzzle, the clip, the rear handle of the gun, there's the underwiring of the Marine's power armor, the more metallic components of his power pack, and the grip of his pistol. I'm also going to remove a finite amount of it and apply it to the black metal of the bolt gun, just to make it look a bit more scratched and used so it has some more depth. Now for the gold trim of my armor, I'm going to use Balthazar Gold, Again, I'm going to remove most of this from my brush. I don't want a huge amount of it. I don't want it going everywhere like our matte layers. I just want it to really give depth, and this is absolutely crucial with metal, and I'm going to go over the areas where I need it. So that's the outside of the shoulder pad. Uh, it's the small circlet of metal on the helmet, and of course, the large Aquila on the chest plate. Now we have a couple of areas that need some uh, fine tuning, so let's go over those. First we're going to do the purity seal, we're going to use Mephiston Red and we're going to apply a very fine layer of that to the uh, wax of the seal. As you can see I've changed brushes for this. This is a fine detailed brush so it's got a very thin nib and I'm going to apply it directly there and while I've still got the red I'm also going to apply it to the eye lenses. Once I've done that, I'm going to go over the levers. So I use Dryad Bark just a little bit uh, to go over the pistol holster. Don't ask me why he's got two pistols. The guy just rolls that way for some reason. So I'm going to do his pistol holster and I'm also going to do the ammo packs on the back quickly with a thin layer of Dryad Bark. Now I want to highlight the lever, so I use Bugman's Glow for this, and don't worry if you go over a little bit like I did here, we're still going to darken down the material, so I'm just going to use a very small amount of it to really bring out that lever. I'm also going to use it on the purity seal before I go into a more beige tone, you shabby to bone. As you can see here, I've already applied the Bugman's, let it dry, and now I'm just applying a very fine amount of you shabby to bone to bring out the beige. Okay, so now it's time to shade. We're going to use Norm Oil all over the model with the exception of the more gold plated areas to really darken everything down and I mean everything, even the areas that we're going to make white, even the glowing red eyes, the metals, everything. We're going to really get it in those crevices and then give our model around half an hour to dry. Once your model's dried, let's start going over the areas that really need a highlight. You can already see it's got a nice finish, um, which is really giving some depth now that it's dried, but I'm going to go over it with white scar in the areas that I want to be, well, white. And I'm going to take my time doing this because it's a very, very 
bright, fantastic highlight of a colour, obviously, because, well, it's, it's white, you know. You need to take your time with this, and just like we did before with the Administratum Grey, we're going to do this in multiple layers. We're going to remove quite a lot from the brush, and we're going to be very, very careful, because we don't want to get it onto the metals or any other surface area of our model. Just take your time, but if you make a mistake, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. You can always go back and touch up that area. Just don't panic. Now again, I'm applying this to all of my model, where it's, well, where it's meant to be white, obviously. So we've got the power fist, the knee pads, the helmet. Um, we just need to get all these areas looking kind of uniform at the moment. Okay, now let's spruce up our gold. I'm going to use Gehenna gold here. And I'm going to apply a very, very light amount of it uh, into the gold working of the armor. And I'm, I'm not using a huge amount of this, I just want to get it off the kind of uh, Balthazar gold at the moment. Because we applied a bit of shade to it, it's made the Balthazar gold go a little bit bronze, but it's good for a base layer, so we're just going to go over it and really liven it up. Now again, I've got my high detail brush here to go in there. Uh, to do the helmet. Once that's dried, I'm going to get Retribute Gold and go over my gold armor again, and I'm going to use even less on my brush this time to really bring out some thick highlights on the edge of the golden armor. So it's very fantastic. It's very, uh, you know, very rich kind of uh, over the top, expensive gold kind of look. Really catches the eye. Now I'm going to use Reichlin Flesh Shade, which I completely missed the camera on, apologies. And I'm just going to go over my gold areas and really get it into the nooks and crannies, especially around the bolts of the shoulder pads and into the, uh, the wings of the Aquila, just to give it some depth. From here, my model's pretty much done. I touched up the eyes again with a bit more of the red. I just dry brushed over them, like we discussed before. And I used a fine uh, artist black pen to quickly add some scribbles, like he's got some litanies and rights of uh, holiness on his armor just to make him look a bit more fancy so thanks for checking out this video today it was a bit of a long one i've got to admit i really hope it has helped some of you out out there if, especially if you're just getting started or if you're coming back to the hobby please check out the channel uh, go check out the instagram drop a like drop a subscribe drop your trousers whatever's good and hopefully i'll see you next time did you just ask somebody to drop that <laughs>